Design of an inventory management system is generally asked in low-level design rounds of companies like Amazon, Flipkart, Walmart, and other e-commerce companies. Now, inventory management system can be a fairly large system. You have to manage inventory. You have to manage the trucks, delivery trucks. Then there should be modules to manage the warehouse, customer returns, and many more. But our goal is to deep dive into the inventory management part only. So. what we want is we will discuss only the part which you will be required to discuss in a low level design interview round in no way this video will aim to teach you everything that you need to know about overall inventory management and management system that is quite a broad scope in which we will not go our explanation is going to be simple and concise enough that it fits in a 45 to 60 minute face to face interview so let's get started on any e-commerce website there are multiple sellers hundreds or thousands of sellers and those sellers sell multiple products can be tens or hundreds of products any seller can sell so when you say inventory and inventory management it will basically deal with inventory means you can in layman terms you can understand it as number of counts of a particular product in a seller's warehouse for example a seller may be keeping 100 samsung galaxy m35 smartphones so in that case uh, you have to manage that count and now let's suppose some customer ordered a phone or three customers ordered a phone so three mobile phones will be shipped to them and the now this count will become 97 so managing this count is what we are going to discuss in the inventory management system when seller buys some of the smart more some more m35 smartphones from samsung and put it in their warehouse then this count is going to increase it may become 110 120 130 and when customers create new orders for this samsung m35 smartphone from this seller then this count is going to decrease and this is what inventory management system is all about managing the count of different products in a seller's warehouse as you might have guessed our system should have the capability of handling different sellers who are selling on our e-commerce website uh, it should also be having the functionality to manage different products which are being sold by different sellers and it should also have the capability to manage different orders which are made by customers for the products which are being sold by different sellers now a single seller can sell multiple products for example the same seller seller 1 can be selling a mobile phone they can be selling a radio they can be selling a t-shirt they can also sell shoes there is no like constraint on that the same product let's say samsung galaxy m35 smartphone can be sold by seller 4 seller 5 seller 10 seller 12 any number of sellers and product id is universally constant so all the products are numbered 0 to product count number minus 1 for simplicity let's assume so product 4 which is our samsung galaxy m35 smartphone so product 4 can be sold by multiple sellers seller 4 seller 5 seller 6 seller 10 seller 12 any number of sellers what we are going to do is first of all we are going to discuss the different core requirements of our system second we are going to build our solution for a multi threaded system so multiple threads will be accessing our code to create sellers to create orders to create inventory or add in add more inventory and that should function correctly that is our code should function correctly finally we will have our completed java code which we are going to test we'll paste it on this code gem editor and then we will run test against it and when it passes all the test then we will be sure that our solution is indeed correct we will take care of thread safety and synchronization we are going to use thread safety data structures so let's get ahead let's go through the different kind of requirements that our system should be able to support the first one is system should be able to add new sellers so each seller will be given a globally unique seller id they are going to be a list of pin codes where seller will be able to deliver the goods certainly a single seller cannot deliver goods to every available pin code they are going to be some payment modes using which sellers can take payment directly from customers those can be something like upi cash net banking debit card or credit card so a seller may support some payment it may not support some payment so yeah a seller should also be able to add some of the inventory for a particular product for example let's suppose a seller bought uh, 50 smartphones from samsung uh, 
let's suppose they bought Samsung Galaxy M35 smartphones, then they should be able to add 50 to the inventory for that Samsung Galaxy product ID, Samsung Galaxy 35 product ID. Then sellers should be able to see how much inventory they have left for a particular product so that they can make a decision whether they should get more of that product in their warehouse or not. Finally, customers should be able to create orders for different products from a given seller on, on the website. So customers will give a destination pin code, make sure that this destination pin code should be reachable for this seller ID. You also already saw the list of serviceable pin codes that each seller has. Now customer will also choose one of the payment modes one of the one payment mode from the, the list of payment modes that are supported by the seller and finally an order will be created so these are the different requirements which our system should support and now that we have our core requirements let's go ahead and start with the design the first thing in any low level design interview after we have done the requirements is we break our overall solution in multiple different classes so we should always start with different entity classes and their corresponding managers. We have been talking all about seller in this uh, whole system. So let's start with class seller. So what will a class seller have? Each seller will have a seller ID. Then it will have a list of pin codes where it can deliver goods. So these are serviceable pin codes that is pin codes that are re reachable by the seller or where seller can deliver goods. Second, they are going to be a few payment modes which are supported by seller and a customer can order a good from a seller or order a product from a seller and pay, th pay them using one of these payment modes. So these are both of these sets are initialized by the list. I have used a hash set uh, and not a simple list so that searching is easier. So two methods are there. They are self-explanatory. First, you have to check whether seller serves a particular pin code or not. And second, whether it supports a particular payment type or not. So this class seller is a simple entity. Let's move ahead. Since we have an entity class seller, so there is going to be a seller manager which will keep track of all sellers in the system. For this, we have used a map of seller ID versus seller objects. It will have the method to create a new seller where it will put a new create a new seller object and put it against its seller ID. Next, it will also have method to get seller details. Now, instead of using a simple hash map to store uh, all these seller objects, I have used a concurrent hash map. It's because our system is multi-threaded and if we use a normal hash map and multiple threads try to create a new seller at the same time, then it is going, it may give concurrent update exception and we want to avoid this. Now you can also use a simple hash map and put it inside a, a synchronized method that is make the create seller method synchronized or we can put it in a synchronized block. But the thing with synchronization is at a time only one write is possible. So at a time only one thread will be able to create a new seller. But we can also argue that even though concurrent has map allows us to create eight new sellers or 16 new sellers at the same time, but still it takes more memory and since not many sellers are being created in a day in any e-commerce website like hardly 100 or 200 sellers will be created in a single day or at best a few thousand sellers will be created in a single day so using concurrent hash map to store these sellers may be uh, it's not worth it so yes that argument can be put there both options are there you may discuss both of these options with your interviewer and proceed ahead so next let's go ahead next is class inventory manager so basically it manages the product count of a given product which is sold by a given seller so it keeps all the product counts of all the sellers and the corresponding products that they sell in a two level map so outer map is basically the product id and inner map is basically all the sellers who sell that product on our website and the product count is basically the count of all items of that product that are in the seller's warehouse. So again, the question is why have you used a concurrent hash map and not a simple hash map and again, an atomic integer rather than a sim simple integer. So if we had used a normal 
two level has map with an integer then if multiple threads were trying to either uh, add an entry for a particular seller for a given product or trying to update the item count then it may have either given product count exception uh, sorry concurrent update exception or it may, may have corrupted the product count because a normal integer is not thread safe and a hash map is not thread safe so again the argument is we could have just made the reduce inventory and the add inventory methods as uh, synchronized or used synchronized block inside them and then updated the product inventory data structure but the thing is using a synchronized is not efficient for writing at best only one thread can write to the data structure at a given time but con while concurrent has map gives us the flexibility of having many threads uh, updating the data structure at the same time so let's suppose eight threads if the uh, basically parallelism of this outer concurrent has map is eight and inner has map is also eight then it is eight cross eight 64 threads can at the same time update the data or you can say in this case either add new entry for sellers for a given product or update their item counts we will come back to why we have added the atomic integer why we are using atomic integer and not a simple integer so the method first method in the inventory manager is get inventory it simply checks if the product exists on our website if not returns zero else it returns the product inventory for that seller if the, that seller sells that item if it doesn't sell then this existing inventory will be null and zero will be returned next method in class inventory manager is reduce inventory it is called when customer creates an order and so that amount delta that is the number of items customer has ordered that should be reduced from the overall inventory or that is number of items inside that seller's warehouse so if 100 phones were there and three some customer ordered three phones so now 97 phones should be left so this is what is happening here now the important question here is now we are already using a concurrent two level concurrent has map so again what is the need of using this atomic integer we could have used a simple integer so the answer to that is better parallelism you see the parallelism parallelism is basically the number of concurrent number of threads who can update a given data structure so here the parallelism of a concurrent hash map is something like 8 or 16 so it is fixed and as we increase the parallelism that is the number of threads which can write to this data structure then it its memory usage or memory consumption also jumps up proportionately and the thing is a single product can be sold by hundreds even thousands of sellers across the country or all over the world wherever our e-commerce website operates and this is our primary operation updating the product item count for our inventory management system so we want to be as efficient as possible we want as many threads as possible to update the product item counts for their respective sellers for a given product so we have used atomic integer here so now using atomic integer means now both these outer concurrent hash maps are used only for reading or for adding new entries for different sellers for a given product those are less frequent operations an update is directly done to the atomic integer an atomic integer although it takes slightly more memory than an integer but it's basically negligible as compared to the benefits parallelism benefits that is it is providing so now if we have thousand sellers selling a given product then all those thousand threads can update their corresponding or respective product count at the same time parallelly so we have better parallelism because of using atomic integer the last method in class inventory manager is the add inventory method so time to time sellers buy products from different companies and add them to their warehouse for example a seller may buy like 100 smartphones from samsung and put them in their warehouse for selling or for shipping when customers order it so this method does that it adds an entry to a new product if for a given seller if it already doesn't exist 
and updates the inventory that is increased it by delta. Finally, we have the class solution and you can call it as the overall controller or overall inventory management system controller for the whole system or it can also be called the tester class. So basically what it does is it initializes the whole system by product count. Product counts is the total number of products being sold in the system. It initializes sellers manager and inventory manager and then it has methods to create sellers and it calls seller manager to create different sellers. It calls inventory manager to add inventory or fetch the inventory details and whenever an order is created then it checks if the seller serves that pin code and whether the seller supports that payment type and if everything is fine then it checks if order is successfully placed if yes then it returns order placed if there was insufficient inventory then it returns insufficient product inventory now we have our completed java code let's go ahead and test everything now we have completed our code so let's select it control a control c and let's paste it in the code gym editor this is question number four so let's paste it here and run the code so it will take a few minutes to run and once it passes so it has compiled and it has passed all the both the test cases in around 4.5 seconds so let's submit it and see that it passes all the test cases as more and more test cases complete we'll see the test case count update that these many test cases have run like you see four test cases have completed out of 12. Now all of our test cases are completed and overall it took 56 seconds. So generally there are tons of test cases and so it may take some time to run. It took it may take around a one minute or two minutes to run. So in this case it took like 56 seconds and all our tests have passed. So since we have seen all the test cases our code pass all the test cases. So now we are confident that we if we get this question in an interview then we will do well there also. This was all about the design of an inventory management system in a multi-threaded environment. So the idea is to use thread safe data structures and know about synchronization, whether you should use synchronize in a given scenario with simple data structures or should we use the thread safe versions like concurrent hash map or atomic integer and which will give us better parallelism and less memory. So how we can use it, this is all about it. In case you are preparing for low level design interviews, then I will recommend you to try codegym.com slash roadmap. This is a seven day preparation plan. It has got all the theory and all the videos, uh, basically day to day preparation schedule and questions each day you have to practice one question. So it has everything at one place and it will can help you prepare for low level design interviews quite efficiently. So basically you do not have to basically you will not be lost in the whole there are tons of videos on YouTube for each channel and you have lots of questions like which videos to see first, which topics to, to read first. So it will answer all your questions and it's basically quite efficient for preparing for LLD interviews and I wish you the best of luck for your interview preparation. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.